All right, guys, talking about <clears throat> two-point perspective today and a little overview again. One-point perspective is when you're square on to a cube-like form and you see the front, but you also might see a couple edges and, and how we can figure out how to draw in that view where you're totally square to the front. Two-point perspective is where uh, you're looking at something on its side and all hell breaks loose because now you've got angles coming in from two different points. Um, one side of the cube and the other. So that could be multiple different scenarios where it's twisted, but normally it means you're kind of squared up to the corner of the cube. Um, so it makes it a little more complicated, but uh, still these rules help um, for us to know what to do in these scenarios. So um, first thing we're gonna do, just like with one point perspective, um, we're gonna draw a horizon line. Now this is really important in your sketchbooks. Um, make sure you're going landscape style. So your page is wider than it is tall. Uh, flip your book around so it's it's wide way um, and then use your long ruler to draw that horizon line all the way across your page um, or eye level line let's call it eye level okay so that's step one for us today and in most cases you want your two vanishing points to be really far from each other as far as we can get so go ahead on your sketchbook paper to put a point at the left side and a point at the right side really, really far away from each other, all the way at the edge of the paper. Um, there's a reason for that. It's really important. We'll talk about that in a second. So we're going to say vanishing point VP1 and vanishing point 2, hence two-point perspective. There's always going to be two points. Now, every cube in a still life will not always be going back to the same two points. Um, all the time, but uh, every cube will have two vanishing points. Um, again, we'll talk more about that down the road and, and when, when things would be parallel when they're not. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's just draw a simple cube. Now I'm gonna aim for kind of the middle of my paper. Now in any perspective drawing, there's kind of a, a cone of vision that happens. So I'm not actually really drawing much of a circle, just very lightly, you guys don't have to do this. But there's like a cone of vision where things will look good right in this area in the middle. As you make cubes that go further and closer to this vanishing point or way closer to this one, they'll get very skewed in space. And that's because of our cone of vision. It's because of our eyes tendency to be able to see um, well when we're looking in front of us and things start to get skewed in our periphery. Um, and things will get skewed in your drawing as well. So uh, let's start with a cube right about in the middle of our page and a couple inches down below our line. Now to start with, I'm just going with a simple vertical line. And we're drawing as vertical as we can. No leaning towers here. It's as straight up and down as we can get. Um, just making it really small to start out with. Now the rules of two-point perspective say that what we're going to do is connect the dots between the top and bottom of this line. And we're going to connect them back to one vanishing point and back to another vanishing point. So let me go ahead and do that for you real quick. Show you what I mean. So I'm going to go from the bottom back to VP2 over here. And we'll just use that straight edge to go along. So I've connected the dots. Bottom to VP2. Now I'm going to go top to VP2. So what we just made is a really long, skinny diamond, or sorry, um, uh, triangle shape uh, that goes all the way back to this point. And then we're going to do the same over here. So connect the bottom point to VP2, or VP1, sorry. doesn't matter what order you do this in. And then the top to VP1. Make sure we line those up nicely. So what this kind of, what this might look like is like a fence, right? Like a chain link fence that just goes on forever into the distance. Um, and we want to make more of a cube, so let's go ahead and box it off. So I'm going to draw a vertical over here, arbitrary, just, you know, deciding on what I think a cube would look like roughly. So um, as close to a vertical as I can get, making sure these feel pretty parallel to each other. And then a vertical over here. Let's just make this side a little bit shorter or less wide. Okay, perfect. You have now two sides of your cube. Now we just need the top edge. Um, the top is the hardest part in this view. Um, and we're still using these two vanishing points. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one corner, so let's say the left corner, and we're gonna draw a line out that goes all the way to VP2. Now then we're gonna to go to the right corner and draw a line out that goes over here to the left. So you kinda of have to crisscross a bit. So once again, we're going left corner all the way over here. So 
I'm gonna line that up, left corner to VP2. Draw that out. Now I'm gonna go right corner to VP1. Upper right corner to VP1. Okay. And now if we draw that a little bit darker, you have a nice top of the cube in perspective. And the top of the cube is also in proportion and perspective with the bottom edges because all of those edges that recede in space and go back away from us are going back to the accurate points that they need to. Now this happens anytime you take a photo of something like buildings or boxes in perspective, you're gonna see this. You could actually draw those lines out. If you printed out a photograph, you could connect the dots and see where all these lines come to a point somewhere. The point is not always on your paper though. That's, that's kind of the trick. Um, let's see what happens when we get really close to our eye level. These are kind of tricky too. So um, we're now gonna come uphill on the paper and let's make another cube. We'll keep this one just a simple cube. Um, so vertical line for the front corner. Now, same sort of thing, we'll use our straight edge and we're gonna go back to VP2 here. Zooming back away from us to VP2. Okay, so I have one side of my box over there. We'll have one side over here. So now I'm going from the bottom and the top corner to VP1. Perfect, okay. Now what you notice is already those angles are a lot flatter than they were down here um, because we're getting closer and closer to our eye level. These are the boxes that are really hard to draw when you're sitting at a still life table and the tops of the boxes almost disappear, but you can still see a little bit of them. They're kind of annoying to be honest with you. Um, but the more, again, the more of these you do, the better and better you get with it. Um, so now, even though this looks kind of flat, there are some subtle angles. So now what we have to do is connect the dot from this left side over here to VP2. So left corner to VP2. This is where it helps to have a really sharp pencil. So make sure you've sharpened that pencil as, as good as it's gonna get, um, or a mechanical pencil, something like that, because you don't want a dull pencil. All these lines are gonna blur and merge together. So I know it's hard to see a little bit, but let's see if we can zoom actually real quick. Sure, so you can see that little bit of a gap. That's all we get for the top side of that um, box. And let's do the opposite. Uh, the to upper right corner all the way to VP1. So VP1, upper right corner, we've got those lined up. And now I'm gonna go right corner all the way to VP1 eventually in the distance. So if you notice, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna shade it in for you so you can see it. This is the littlest sliver. That's all we're gonna get of the top of this box. And it looks something like that. It's crazy. Barely looks like those are at angles, right? But it's, this, it's a super compressed diamond shape compared to this one, which we see a whole heck of a lot more of, right? Because we went lower in space. So this just goes to show you, and you'll notice it at home, if you're sitting at a, if you put boxes on your coffee table, um, and you're sitting up much higher than them, you'll see a lot more to the top of them. If you sit them on a table um, that's much taller and then you're sitting in a low chair, you'll see boxes that look like this and it's really, it can be tough to get those super compressed um, upper portions of the boxes. So I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see that what this looks like from a more natural distance, okay? Um, so there are two cubes. Let's just go ahead and darken those up a little bit using that 3B pencil to kind of clarify our lines just a little bit now. Because these things can start to get a little bit hairy um, with all of these construction lines, the perspective lines. So I like to just snap these into focus a bit so we know what we're looking at. And I would encourage you guys to do the same so that our, our focus is on the boxes and not these lighter construction lines. So I'm always keeping these a lighter pressure. Um, so that's getting closer to the eye level line. Let's do one that splits the eye level line just like we did in one point perspective. So let's say the corner of our box is right here. And remember that's the horizon or eye level. So if that's the case, we could see a left and a right side. Um, what's gonna happen is from the top corner of the box, 
we're going to go down to the right vanishing point. From the bottom, we'll go up to the right vanishing point. And from the bottom, we'll also go up to the left. Bottom, or sorry, top, down to the left. Okay, and so then it's up to you to cap this off. Remember, when you split the eye level line like this, you can't see the bottom or the top of the box, so you'll only end up seeing two edges. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's say it looks something like this. Perfect, and there will be times where you can only see two sides of a box like that. So when would that be? Um, so notice our eye level line is probably right around here. Um, with the camera. So if I hold this cube like this, you can see right side, left side, but you can't see the top or bottom. Now compare that to if I raise it above the eye level line, you'll notice, oh, that's not good. It's too much in shadow. I'll go below. You can see now that we're below eye level, we get um, right side, left side, and a sliver of the top. And the lower I go, the more to the top that you'll see. Okay. Um, and then uh, just keep practicing these guys. Let's do one up above eye level as well because that'll be really good practice too. I'm gonna make this one more of maybe a rectangle just for the heck of it. So we're going significantly above eye level, nice vertical line, okay? And now we're gonna do the same thing, but in reverse, I should, I should mention that. This is kind of inverted. So from the bottom, we're going to go downhill toward the vanishing point top we're gonna go also downhill toward the vanishing point so we're all our other diagonals we're going upward on the paper um, and back now we're going back and down in space because we're looking up at this this object so if you can just remember that these vanishing points are here for a reason and you know all you have to do is in, wherever you are on the page as long as you connect back to them you're gonna be in business okay so from the bottom down to the left side vanishing point. So that's really important what I just mentioned and I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, no matter where I am on the page with these boxes, I could keep going and going and going. All of the lines are gonna come back to those vanishing points and you can see that happening here. Um, so when in doubt, look back to these. Um, what did I say I would do? I said we'd make this kind of a long box. So more of a longer, skinnier rectangle. Okay, left side, right side. Now, on where the left side meets this diagonal, we're gonna go over to the right vanishing point. And where the right side meets this diagonal, we're gonna go to the left. Beautiful. So if I was shading, say the underside of this, you can see there's a good bit to that underside that we can see. And part of that is because it's a really big box. Um, if I did that same box, but all the way up here, you would see even more on the underside because it's getting further and further away from our eye level. Um, so uh, do a couple more practice boxes, do a few more floating up here, a few more down here. And just remember, it's when we would put a box way over here really close to the vanishing point or way over on this side that things get a little hairy and they don't seem to be as accurate. So remember, set those vanishing points wide, focus your boxes more in your cone of vision, which is gonna be kind of in a nice centered circle right here in the middle.